Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Range Pass by Callaway. Got two guests on this week. We've got. Uh, I'm going to start with Ian Garbert, our, our man from Callaway. How are you? Good, thanks, Shane. Good man. So I've got a couple of details about you here. You're a scratch golfer at 16 years old, and then yeah, you won the English Amateur Championship at 18 years old, uh, which is pretty special. And then you turned pro in what year? Uh, turned pro in '92. Okay, and you've you've, uh, you've been on been on the tour, and uh, been player management. Is that right? Yeah, played the tour from ninety two to two thousand and eight, and then worked for ISM as a player manager yeah. for five years, and then uh, moved to Callaway first of January twenty fourteen. Top man, and what, what's your role at Callaway now? Uh, my role at Callaway now is uh, tour team manager, so managing the guys. Uh, on the tour team, technicians, Odyssey putter rep and uh, reps on the range, which I started off doing myself at Callaway, repping a lot on the range, which I still do, but yeah, just uh, managing the team now. And then um, previous to, to Callaway, uh, you've, you've met our guest here, um, who I'm going to introduce now, uh, Mr. Michael Vaughan, OBE. Uh, a few details on this man, as everyone would already know him. Uh, Ex-England cricketer and England captain, um, Captain England to oh, 51 tests, winning 26 tests. Is that right? That's a record. Would I be right in saying that? Well, it, it was until Joe Root uh, uh, kind of broke the record this summer. He's got 27 now. He's pretty much stolen everything that I ever did in my career, Joe Root. The only thing he had stolen <laughs> is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That'll probably happen. Well, well, still time for that. <laughs> We've also got here... The pinnacle of your captaincy being a 2-1 2005 Ashes victory, which was the first in 18 years. So he can't be having that off you. That sounds pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's um, probably the pinnacle of my career. Um, I, I, I firmly believe when you get given the, the captaincy of England or Australia, the only focus that you have in your mind is to either beat, in my um, team's uh, case, beat Australia. And I'm sure in the Australian captain's mind is to try and uh, beat the English. It's just... Very similar to the Ryder Cup in golf, it's the, it's the one element of our, our, our team game and uh, particularly Test Match cricket, that's the real pinnacle of an England player's mindset and captain's mindset is to, to make sure that you try and beat them buggers from down under. Yeah, I hear and And as you mentioned there, we're like, we're hot off the Ryder Cup and, you know, you, you've captained teams. What's been, I'll start with you, Michael, what, what's been, what was your thoughts on the Ryder Cup? I presume you would have watched it all unfold. Did it, I guess my question would be, did you have any pre-thoughts on how it would go? Uh, and did those pan out? Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes in sport you've got to be realistic. Um, you know, when you looked at both teams on, on paper, uh, you looked at the American team. I mean, I, I'm just an amateur golfer that loves playing the game for a bit of fun and having the odd gamble with my mates who I play with. But, you know, when you see teams on paper in any sport and you see that one's so strong and, and the world rankings would, would, would prove that from the American side and they're on home soil and... The, the Europeans, you know, they've got no support. They're away from home. Um, realistically, if a team that is much stronger on paper arrives and just plays OK and plays to somewhere near their standard, they're going to be very, very difficult to beat. But from what I saw, the Americans just probably played above their standards. So it's near on impossible uh, to beat a team like that in any sport. You know, it, it's like us going to Australia back in the day and you play against the likes of Shane Waugh, Glenn McGrath on their own backyard. You know, you could play to your maximum by probably 25% over and still come unstuck um, because they're that good. And that's what I saw over the weekend. You had one team that were exceptional and played fantastic and a European team that tried. They tried everything. Um, and on the three days, they just mm -hmm. came up against the better team. Yeah, it just did seem like uh, the US team was, was probably it was, it was the best team ever, ever coming into it, world ranking-wise. And for Europe to overcome them, everything had to fall into line and um, probably needed the, some of the US players to not perform. But it just seemed like all the US players who needed to step up, step, stepped up, you know, with DJ going 5-0, and uh, getting all five wins. And then we just heavily, heavily relied on some of our big players who, you know, maybe the pressure was maybe all the focus is on, on there so much. There was, there was literally no wiggle room and, and kind of ended up going against us. Garby, what did you see? Um, in the Ryder Cup, how did you think it all went? Did it did it go how you thought it would go, or do you think we had a better chance at the beginning? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm with Michael on it. I think their team was so good. I mean, look at world rankings, like the best team they've ever fielded. 
I thought the one thing what might go in our favour was the golf course and maybe a bit of wind, you know. Uh, and then obviously players, the Europeans have been so up for the Ryder Cup over the years that they just seem to play better, don't they? You know when they turn up there. But but as Michael said, you know you got or you said Johnson five and zero. Oh, that means they only need nine and a half points from the from the other eleven guys. You know it's it's uh, so yeah. I mean you know you, put, you have to hold your hands up sometimes, don't you? And just say wow, what a team. Then. Regroup for two years' time. Yeah, go again. Okay, well, we'll uh, we'll move on from that dour conversation. Uh, we're hoping for better, but we'll get back to um, we'll get back to this week, which is going to be a lot more exciting, especially for yourself, Michael. The Dunhill Links Trophy, which is a, what, a fantastic uh, tournament, getting to play three great courses uh, in in tournament conditions alongside uh, professional golfers. I'm pretty sure you've had previous experience at this event. Have you had what? Have you had any success in the past? What's been your your, your best finish? Yeah, I, I reckon I've averaged ten Guinnesses a night in the jigger. Um, so that's generally um, my par for the course good, for the good week. Effort, good effort. Uh, I'll try and improve upon that this week if I can. Uh, I've, I've had one one time when I made the cut, uh, and that was with Danny Willett. Oh, oh, that would have been back in probably two thousand and I don't know six, seven, something like that. So a long time ago. Um, oh, it's the best week of the year. Um, I, I don't think. Anyone that's not been can really uh, understand how great a week the Dunnell Links is for, for us as amateurs. I, I hear the pros really enjoy it as well. I hope they do because it, it does seem like a, a week where they can have a bit of fun. Uh, obviously, there's a big prize for them at the end of it. But, you know, from the players that I've played with over the years, whether it's Darren Clark, Danny Willett, um, they all seem to relax and just enjoy the week. Um, for us, it, I can't imagine any other sport that you could get this opportunity to be side by side next to a pro for... Uh, three days, hopefully four, just to see a professional golfer go about their business, uh, the way they operate, the mindset, the processes that they go through. Uh, it's very similar to, to, to what I see in cricket in terms of a batter that goes out into the middle to, to face a delivery. You know, you, you have to face, a, you'd hope, uh, quite a few deliveries in a day's play, and that's like playing a shot. You know, you're playing 70-odd shots around, you'd hope 65 of you. If you're playing nicely, but you know you see in golf that uh, the the pros go through the same processes, even though it's a different technique and a different skill that a batter would do in a test match. It's exactly the same in terms of the mindset. So I I really like standing by, side by side with the pros just to see how they operate, how they go about the business, and obviously to see them play the shots that I can't get close to playing. It's uh, it's always a joy to to kind of see them operate under pressure of a tournament. Yeah, it's quite it's it's an impressive thing to watch someone do. You know, you know, in the flow of their sport and just like you know, intuitively going through the motions and and doing things without it, even they probably wouldn't even know to say do it. But you know, as you say there, respecting the process that goes through and the pressure that goes with it, and to make certain shots look so easy and so matter of course, but there's so much underneath it. It really is is quite something. Garby, did you play in the Dunhill Links Trophy? Yeah, I played. I played quite a few Dunhill Links. Yeah, and, and really enjoyed it. I. Uh... I played the first one actually, which I can't remember what year that would be. But uh, I played, I've played quite a few. And to be honest, uh, the nice thing about it is I've still kept in touch with some of my partners. You know, there are some some really nice people playing this event, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can meet some great people along the way. And, I've, and I'm still in touch with some guys now. Uh, did Did you guys ever pair up, or was that um, have you always stayed apart? No, well, I reckon me and no. Garvey played our first round of golf. Well, it must have been the nineties, Garvey. Oh, I reckon it would it, oh, have been in, Dar in Doncaster, wouldn't it? Definitely, yeah. I've, well, I think we met. Well, I think we met through Ian Snodden, didn't we? Did Ian Snodden bring you over to play golf? Or that's right. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, we played there. And then we used to play. We played up at Door and Totley a few times in Sheffield, I think. And uh, yeah. with Hurst, right. Steve, David Hurst, remember David Hurst sent the board for Chef Wednesday. Yeah. He was a mate of Orny's. Yeah, there seems to be a bit of a trend with Garby. He seems to like people that uh, like a pot or two, like to spend a bit of time in the bar. There's a bit of a common denominator with the, with the friendships that he decides upon. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's coming through. That it's coming through. And do, when you guys play, do you, do you like do you pay for a fiver? Do you pay for a drink? Do you try and get on it? You try and get on the same team? Uh, I think, well, I think yeah. last time we played, we played with our sons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were looking, and, and, I was looking at the balls all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they still they still managed to beat us because they, yeah. they always uh, negotiate yeah. a lot of shots. I, I I can't play golf without something on it. I, I, you know, yeah. I have to have a okay. you know, even if it's just a, a couple of quid or a, you know, the, the drink afterwards. Um, you know, I think once you've yeah. been a professional sports person, you need that focus of something. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah, I, I always, I agree. You know, whatever, if I'm playing a game of snooker or just a bit of badminton in the garden, even when I'm playing with my 10 year old, I say, come on, let's play for a you know, bag of sweets. <laughs> let's play for something. It's got to be something on it. It's just that competitiveness that you need. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm exactly the same. I think walking around the golf course, even with my pals, playing for, a, even if playing for a fiver, almost like, yes, it's nice to play for a lot more money, but I still don't want to lose that fiver coming to the last hole. We're having all the putts across time, which will probably would have been, um, that would have missed probably for, uh, for thousands of pounds. Still losing, losing a tenner to one of your best mates. It's still, it's, it's just gut wrenching, isn't it? You just, you just don't want to do it. You just want to keep it going. So with, so with this, um, you know, kind of, uh, after cricket life going into golf now, what's been, uh, got a question for you. So I think you played at the, the Pro-Am at uh, Wentworth, um, a couple of weeks ago for the BMW PGA. Uh, you've obviously played the Links Trophy. What, so two golf courses, St Andrews and Wentworth, which is your favourite? <laughs> that's, uh... That's that, that's like decided, you know, between a tomahawk and a nice sirloin. I mean, they're both great, aren't they? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, Wentworth is fantastic, uh, particularly when you know we're, we're fortunate enough to play the day before in a pro am. Uh, great crowds. I thought this year yeah. it was it was fantastic because you saw the crowd, but they seemed to be having a load of fun. It was almost like they'd been released to have some fun and create some atmosphere. Um, I don't think you can beat the home of golf. It's like the home of cricket, Lords. You, you go and play at great venues in cricket, whether it's the MCG, the SCG in Australia, uh, Newlands in Cape Town, uh, South Africa is fantastic. But there's something about the home of, of, of you know great sports. And for us, it's Lords. Uh, for me, that's always the best ground in the world and always will be. And in golf, uh, it just sniffs of history and heritage when you arrive at St. Andrews. When you drive up there and you just kind of turn left and you arrive at St. Andrews, you can just, you can smell the history. Um, so yeah. uh, I don't want to bag Wentworth because it's a great course, but uh, the home of golf is, is something very, very special. Yeah, I agree with that. How about you, Garby? What's your, what would be your one and two? Uh, yeah, I mean, I love St Andrews. I'm, I'm a bit like what Michael's like. I just love the heritage of it. I played the Open here in 2000, actually, in the Millennium Open, which was fantastic. Uh, and I, and there's so many ways to play this course. Every time you play it, I just think it's, uh, you know, you find new ways or different ways. It's, yeah, uh, I think it's a great golf course. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think Wentworth's fantastic, isn't it? But there's it's just so much history to St Andrews, which is just uh, this makes it a really, really special place. So, Michael, we, we couldn't have you on the on the Callaway Range Pass podcast without asking you what is in your bag right now. What's your what what what's I tell you what what's what's your favourite club, and then what club do you need Garvey to work on this week to get you firing? Well, usually I have about twenty four clubs in the bag, but I'm not allowed this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my epic driver goes. It's a bomb. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, wh why I like St Andrews so much is that my duck hook left works at St Andrews because it just keeps yeah. going yeah. left and you're fine. So, Good shout. Um, yeah, my really bad shot is that kind of horrible duck hook which works at St Andrews. Um, well, I'm, I'm not just saying that. All, all the clubs I have are fine. It's not. It's not the material or the the tools with me. It's about my swing. Uh, my apex irons fly. Um, I've got every rescue you can imagine, every wedge. Um, <laughs> my Odyssey put is working nicely as well. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's one of those with me that um, it, it's just my swing. If I, can, if I can swing it all right, I'll play reasonably well. If, if, if my swing, it's that wind and, and when it gets a bit wet. And I, I'll probably say once I've woken yeah. up, having I mean, had probably one or two Guinnesses too many. That, that's my downfall at the, uh, the Dunnell. It's my swing and, and the jigger in. That's my uh, that's my nemesis. Well, I was go I was going to ask you about your preparation. I mean, it sounds like your 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 route is the is the jigger in is is part of your practice routine, part of your warm up, and that um, that takes you in, does it? Well, what it is is um, I think you need to be well fed, um, and you get a good food. Yeah. Uh, and and throughout the week at the the jigger, the menu has about six main courses. I think it's a burger. Uh, a steak and chips uh, there's a chicken and chips there's yeah. a curry and chips and you kind of go through the, the menu throughout the week and, and, and then you add it you know the, the nutrients of a, a Guinness or two they say there's a meal in every Guinness you know it's protein it's kind of building you up with strength and stamina for the next <laughs> round uh, and then you can go the next day so that's generally my uh, my process of the week I, I speak about processes a lot in yeah. sport well 
I'm not saying that anyone should follow my processes in golf, but uh, I, I love it. I absolutely adore the, you know, the banter. It's like being back in the dressing room, being uh, back in the jigger after the rounds of golf. Everyone's mm-hmm. chatting, having a bit of fun, uh, taking the mick out of those that have played terribly. And those that have actually played well get more stick and more pressure yeah. gets put yeah. on them for the next day. Don't bottle it. Don't yip. Uh, so you're better off being middle of the road, middle of the pack, and try and sneak through there on the Saturday afternoon for the uh, the Sunday Cup. Yeah, you don't you don't want the pressure from the first day having to carry that burden. You'll be able to cruise along, don't you? Have, have a good time. Well, you, you, what what you don't need is to be leading after round one. Yeah, because it well then that just start, starts you thinking, and it's really interesting because I chat to people about golf. You know, from uh, from playing to now coaching professionals and you know and people like yourself who just just love playing and love have their own tournaments are important to them the feelings are still the same in that all the things you've said there is the same for the professionals like as in yes you want to get off to a nice start but not it's tough to carry the burden from day one right through to day four and that's you know and, and i think what's great about golf and and especially the tournament you're going into is that it's yeah there's a, there's a certain type of person who can front run and there's a certain type of person who, who kind of knows when to take the foot off the pedal and knows when to put the, the foot down. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a small few, isn't there, in all sports that you know like to get in front and they stay in front. Um, you know, there's been some great teams. Uh, you look at, I, I, I believe, the best um, sporting team in the world and they're the All Blacks. You know, they're, they're the team that I think everyone tries mm. to aspire to be like. Uh, great people, great ethos. Great culture around the group, but you know they like to be front runners, and you know they pretty much always deliver. Um, Tiger Woods, you would say, in golf, you know he had that uh, kind of belief and that energy and that, yeah. that strength in mind to do pretty much anything in, in in golf. But you know, I think there are quite a few in the majority of sports people, sports teams that just like mm-hmm. hovering and then they can pounce at the right time. That's always the key yeah. in any sport is is when you know you have to win, whether it's you know on that last round yeah. or that last nine holes or in that last 20 minutes, that last day in a test match, they do have a, the mindset of knowing how to do it and, and, and knowing how to completely commit yeah. to the stroke, uh, completely focus, uh, stay calm, controlled. Um, you know, that's why, you know, the likes of the, the very, very best uh, are the best because they've got the minds. Generally, they, they have swings that are very similar to, to most or they have games that are very similar to most others, but they have a stronger mm-hmm. mind that uh, they know how to switch it on at the right time. Yeah, are these all going to be attributes you're going to be using on Sunday as you walk down the last few holes uh, at St Andrews this week? This I'll be week. honest, if I'm still playing on Sunday, I, I, I think Callaway should give me a huge bonus. <laughs> I think I should be on a bonus if I'm still playing on Sunday. It would be one of the great stories of uh, the golfing calendar year. <laughs> I'll be, it'd be good if I'm still stood up on Sunday, yeah. never mind yeah. playing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it it was going to be. I think the highlight was going to be about John Rahm, but I think it might all change to Michael Vaughan if he can make the cut here and still be playing on Sunday <laughs> to rewrite that record. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Garby, just so on this week, so your job is to look after the players, make sure they've got everything they want. Um, this week is clearly different. How is it different for you uh, having the mixture of the AMs and the pros? Um, and do you do you look after the uh, the AMs this week, or are you very much focus on the on the Callaway? Yeah, I mean, we do. Look, we've got there? you know, like Michael, we've got quite a few ambassadors of Callaway who we uh, who we look after. Michael and uh, Joe Root's got an invite this week. I think it's his first time playing. Michael, is it, Joe? Yeah, Joe? that's right. Yeah, we look after Joe Root, Sir Ian Bolton. We've got a bit of a cricketing theme going on here, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so we do look after the AMs. You know, if the AMs need anything while they're up here, and we'll make sure he's got a nice warm hat. And some gloves, <laughs> and then any, anything needs tweaking in the golf bags, we'll sort that as well. And then, and then, have you had any? Um, have you have you had any any unusual requests over the over the years from pros or AMs during this no, week? No, I wouldn't say any unusual requests. No, you know, we've had some unusual requests over the years. You know, gluing somebody's trainer soul back on for a caddy or something. But, but... <laughs> go on, t- tell us, tell us that one. Who, who's that? Oh, I can't remember it was, yeah, but, you know, brought his pair of trainers and a monk should re-glued his soul and, you know, put it in the vice for an, half an hour to be glued back on so he could carry on walking. And... <laughs> oh, you're oh, joking. Yeah. The, pl- the player needs to be paying him more. Well, that's, that's no good, is it? That's embarrassing to have you caddy out there glued on, glued on <laughs> trainers. But, yeah, it's great to see the amateurs, actually, and, 
and watch them hit balls on the range because they have a they have your own special section, I think, at the end there, and they get some coaching off. Uh, Don't know, provide a coach if they want to go over there and have a few tips and. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember my uh, one of my first years at the Dunnel? My, one of my first shots on the range, and I, and I, I skimmed it. and It hit that rock about fifteen, twenty yards in front. Yeah, and it hit the rock, yeah. and it's gone over my head, and it's landed in the trucks which are behind oh, us. And I <laughs> sharply just turned around to all the pros and went, "I bet you lot can't do that." <laughs> yeah. I think. Because I think the range is a, the range is one of the holes, so I think it was the T marker for the hole, and he's flushed it in the middle. Yeah, and shot him. Yeah, I also there was a lady walking a oh. dog down near the beach. She had a lovely long mac on, and I've shanked one right because we yeah. always go to the right of the range, as Garby said. They have their own amateur kind of section, and I've shanked one right, and this lady's walking. I've smacked her in the back, and she just looked round and just waved. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a regular occurrence for her getting it, you know, as she was walking down the beach. Gosh, she's, uh, yeah. she's brave walking down honest. that side well, of the range. Uh, that, that would lead into my next question. My next question was going to be, what were your best and worst shots? Um, so you've probably given, I, I presume there are a couple of uh, your worst shots. What's been your best shot at the Dunhill Links over the years? Oh, uh, I hit the, uh, the pin on 11 at St Andrews. And... As it hit the pin, it kind of out and dropped straight down and landed, you know, within an inch. And I thought to myself, oh, I've nearly got a hole in one. And then I thought to myself, oh, it's probably the week that you don't want a hole in one. <laughs> if there was ever a week not to get a hole in one, the Dunner Leaks is that week. Uh, it would have been the greatest shot of my life. and It probably still is the greatest shot. But it certainly would have been the most costly uh, shot of my life that it had gone in. So, yeah, I'd say that one hit the pin on eleven. It would have been the most expensive shot of your life for sure. <laughs> so, um, so talking about cricket golf technique, I think it's quite interesting because most of the cricketers um, that I play golf with, you know, have a pretty good technique, have a reasonably good impact position. In that, there's, I think, there's certain similarities, you know, kind of handle forward, um, so forth, and, and the power and the stance, and um, you know, hitting a, being able to hit a moving target as opposed to a still target it must be. It should, in theory, be easier, but I know the golf comes with its difficulties. Have you, what what sort of player are you? Do you hit the ball far um, for your level? Do you hit the ball short? Are you an accurate player? You know, you said you hook it a little bit sometimes. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm that. I, I wouldn't say I'm that accurate. I, I, I'm quite. I can get one going quite low, and I think cricket. You know, when I played the game of cricket, and you know, when it was taught in the eighties, nineties, and early two thousand, it was very much a rocking game where you dip your front shoulder mm-hmm. in to play your stroke. I think with the the modern game of T yeah. Twenty cricket, where these guys are just whacking it miles, it's more of a turning game, like like golf. You know, turning onto the shot. Right. Uh, so you are using yeah. that twist and, and that movement through your body more so than when I played cricket and was taught. We were very much, you know, you get that shoulder going towards the ball and you dip towards the ball, which is obviously not what you need in golf. Um, so I do think the modern cricketer, particularly, you know, I look at someone like Joss Butler who plays um, brilliantly at striking a cricket ball and he's got a, a very similar um, golf swing, which is just turn onto it and he, he whacks it miles. Absolutely. Him and Ben Stokes hit a golf ball. Uh, I'm not saying they're quite like Bryson just yet, but they give it an almighty launch and it goes high, it just kind of flies in the air. Um, and it's probably because they've got a different cricket technique they've, they've got a, a turning technique for the game of cricket which just you know goes straight into the golf the cricketers these days play so much more golf on the morning of a game because the t20 match is about four hours long it might be at six o'clock at night and some players will actually play golf in the morning of a game mm-hmm. they'll go in buggies so they're not walking and coaches don't mind it because really? they feel they're getting into the kind of groove of whacking a cricket ball so uh, yeah. technically i think cricket's changed over the last 15 years which should at the last... Well, these, these young cricketers should be better golfers than certainly the old codgers like me and Ian both them. <laughs> well, I know that, obviously, you're a, you've been a, are, have been a professional cricketer and now you don't love your golf. What do, you, do you think... What's, what's a harder game? Golf or cricket? And I mean, in terms of, like, trying to... I guess, I guess from trying to make it, sort of, point of view, you know, who you've got to get through. Do you, which, is, which is a harder game, in your opinion? Oh, I... I think it's impossible to say which. I think, I think both are very, very tough. Um, you know, I think, you know, when you see players who are at the top of the game, you know, the one thing that you see that's very common is their ethic of work. 
you know, they're willing to work hard, mm-hmm. um, willing to always try and get better. Um, you know, they've just got that passion and energy and enthusiasm for the game, whether it's cricket or, or golf, you have to have that. I can't, and I haven't seen a, a high class sports person mm-hmm. of any, any sport that's not had the passion for the game that they're playing. A uh, bit of fortune, you always need a bit of luck, uh, but you know, you, you want to get that if you work really hard. Uh, so I, I, honestly, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't say which is which is harder. All I know is that playing at the highest level in any sport is tough. You know, it's really, really difficult. Uh, that's why I admire any, any whether it's a footballer, rugby player, tennis player, golfer, cricketer, uh, anyone yeah. that gets to the yeah. top and stays there. So I look at someone like Joe Root, who, who's 31 years of age. I think he's 31. Um, he's going to break every record and play till he's probably 38, 40. Um, you know, Jimmy mm-hmm. Anderson, who's mm-hmm. played cricket for England for, I think, 18 years now. I look at Lee Westwood and right, what he's done right. on the European tour, well, in, in, across the world with his golf. And Ian Poulter, I saw them in the Ryder Cup. I, I thought the mindset of those two on the final afternoon to get their points was outstanding. You know, yes, they'd not had a great first yeah, two days, yeah. but they got the point. And that's all in the head and that's all in the drive. And I think more and more sports now are, are, are being able to get people playing for longer because of the way that they're looking after themselves. I think, you know, the athletes that they are now and the training and the nutrition, um, the, the time that they spend in the gym more so than obviously when I was playing back in the 90s, early 2000s, it's it's a testament to the, the, the kind of work that they put in. So I just like seeing sports people that um, can produce it, you know, under pressure. Uh, and when you see players like Lee, who's done it for year after year after year and still playing to an incredible standard, uh, I don my my cap to uh, to Lee's uh, a tremendous uh, kind of role model to to every sports person. Yeah, I mean, uh, Garby, you would you would attest to this. I can look at you know we see some different world number ones come and go a little bit, but at the moment we've got like John Rahm, and I know he's a lot younger, but there just seems to be uh, so much about about John Rahm. He just seems to tick so many boxes, and he seems to if things aren't going well, he has an intensity to want to to turn it around and and claw his way back um and then when he's on when he's all when he is flying he's also comfortable in that situation of pressing on and keeping the foot down um you know have you been able to you know you've obviously had experience of like being up and close to john Rahm a little bit and watching him play you know i know he's a, he's a bit younger but is he someone who you think will stay there for for years to come yeah i i, I definitely think well, i think what michael touched on there i think his passion for the game you know He's all about golf. He just loves, I think you can just see his intensity. He just loves the sport so much and he wants to succeed. I mean, before he turned pro, I remember people saying he said then he was going to be in the world number one before he even turned pro because I, it was, uh, it was Jose Maria Latabal was telling us that he knew him and he was saying that, well, this guy from Spain, John Ram, he said he's going to be world number one. He's going to break all the records. He's going to do it. You know, and he really believed it himself and, you know, you'll take your hat off to him. He's, he's, he's come out here and he's just, well, at the moment, you know, world one is, you know, he is the best player in the world. Yeah, and he just seems to have all those boxes. I think there's some other players at the top there who who are obviously unbelievable golfers. They're fantastic, but there's something different about. It. He doesn't have a weakness. He doesn't have like a can't see. A, there's not a chink in his armor, and he seems to have every each aspect you would want. And on top of that, as you said, I think arguably the most important gel is he's just got a passion for it, and he wants to be up for it. And he's he's been a yeah. he's been an absolute pleasure to watch. And his, and his technique, I mean, if you look at the length of his backswing, I mean, it's so compact and the power he creates from there. It's, yeah. you know, you know yourself saying it's, you know, you, yeah. most people, you know, it, most people have as far as, you know, have got a really big wind up and that, but he's like short and sharp and yeah. a quick tempo with a short swing. It's, it's, it's yeah. amazing to watch close up. Yeah. I mean, oddly enough, obviously he has got a short swing, but he's just got this few dynamics, a bit of a bowed wrist, slightly de-lofted, able to hit it on the up when he wants to hit that fade, turn on to hit a fade. It just seems to be so so tight um and yeah it's it's an abs- absolute pleasure to watch so on on that note um how well do you know michael's game and uh, is there something that is 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 there an area that you think he should work on or he can he's going to he's going to benefit from with putting a bit of extra extra hours in yeah it well like michael's got plenty of power actually he's getting a free lesson yeah. in michael right here we go no, i'm listening i'm listening he's got, lo- he's got loads of power Mike, can it, yeah. Mike, it's a three wood. You know, Mike. When I played last, he was hitting his three wood past my driver. He's a, he's a powerful player. He's tall. He's 
probably he's got the cannon. He just probably needs the sights fitting. In. <laughs> <laughs> like it, like yeah. it. Yeah, but he, uh, oh, good man. No, he's so we're gonna kind of come around. Think, Go on. He's a, he's a streaky player. He's gonna make you. He's gonna make you an eagle or plenty of birdies. But he may, you know. He may be down the beach a few of the holes, but he'll be. But he's always going to give you plenty of birds and eagles. Well, one thing's for sure, Garvey. I, I, I won't die wondering. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> like, all, all the things I've heard today, just like you can, like you can do the drinking and socialising. You hit it, hit it left with your bad shot. You hit it miles. You get eagles. It seems like just like it seems like the dream partner this week. Do you, do you know who your um? Do you know who who your pro is this week, or do you find out when you get there? No, we f- we find out on on Tuesday night at uh, a drinks reception. So that that's where the week starts. <laughs> you have a nice drinks reception. You get an envelope, uh, and your envelope. You're not allowed to open it until uh, Johan Rupert's. Uh, he makes a speech, um, goes through a few rules, and uh, introduces a few people, uh, and then we're allowed to open the uh, the envelope, and then we find out who we're playing with, uh, which courses we're playing at. Obviously, the three courses: Carnoustie, Kings Barnes, and St Andrews. Which order? Who you who you're playing with in terms of your amateur partner? Who they they've got as a pro? Uh, it, it's always great when you see everyone open the envelope <laughs> just to see who you've got. And then, what's the what is the format for the rest of the week? If you decide, we know, but if you could explain it for us. Uh, how's the scoring work? Uh, how many days? The cut, so forth. Yeah, it's just uh, it, obviously the, the the pros are playing uh, a European Tour event, so they're obviously just uh, playing their ball. Um, you know, it's a big prize for them this week, and then we try and better the ball. You get your, I think it's ninety percent of your your average. So I think of your your handicaps. I mm-hmm. think I'll get five shots, and obviously on those five holes that I get a shot, I <laughs> hope to come in. Um, you know, most of the time, I have to be honest, you're playing and you're just admiring and watching your pro, you know, just, you know, hoping. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, yeah. that, that's the one thing I say about the Dunny. You, you end up getting nervous for your pro because you're desperate for him to do well and you, you want him to make those putts and desperately want them to make the cut and, and have a good week themselves. I, 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 oh, I'd like to have a, a decent week myself, but I, I really kind of buy into the pro and hope that my pro can have a good week. And, you know, I just hope they're there on Sunday. It's irrelevant. If I'm there on the Sunday afternoon, um, you know, it's more important that we try and get to whoever I'm playing with to the Sunday afternoon. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be a, a brilliant week for you. We do uh, hope you do burn it up and um, keep it on the straight and narrow because it sounds like you're pretty dangerous. I might, it's, uh, Garby, I might need some ammo. Goal post, so. Might need a bit of ammo. If you, can you just load me <laughs> up a bit of ammo? <laughs> we've, got, we've, got a truck, we've got a truck of ammunition here for you. We'll bring a wheelbarrow out. <laughs> 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 so just just to round up i've got a little piece here uh that you both have a love of tea um and there's garby tells it there's one brand that makes it onto the truck is that correct well, it's only, that's all you can have it's all you're allowed look at the bag <laughs> that'll only last this week yeah <laughs> uh, here we go that should get us through this afternoon <laughs> 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 Good stuff. Well, guys, thanks so, thanks so much for your time. Um, uh, fascinating talking to you, to you both. Uh, good luck this week, Michael. Cheers, Tear, it up. Tear it up. Say hi to Rick Lewis for us. Um, and yeah, everybody follow, subscribe and uh, yeah, everyone have a great couple of weeks and we'll catch you at the next Range Pass podcast by Callaway. Thanks, thanks Zane. Cheers, Zane.